Hi, Nico Anna here today. I want to talk to you about the difference between a narcissistic injury and a narcissistic personality disorder. So a lot of people ask me this constantly, um, clients and, you know, people who are in my audience will wonder, how can I tell if someone is a narcissist? And I know that's kind of a loaded question. And, it, and it's, it's, it's really, it's hard to answer that question without kind of doing some pre-framing. And let's just talk about what does the term narcissist really mean anyway? Um, you know, different people mean different things when they say narcissist. To me, the word narcissist is just a term that is used in general to describe a person, an individual that has behaviors and traits of, of narcissism, meaning their, their behaviors and their actions are typically going to fall in line with, with the certain types of narcissistic traits, which we, we talk about a lot on this channel. Um, you know, the biggest ones being an attitude of superiority, um, entitlement, the need to control, uh, a lack of empathy, um, you know, the, the ability to just manipulate and lie without really taking responsibility, um, the need to constantly um, be in the upper position, um, and also a need to be the victim, you know, the need to always be blaming and be projecting onto others. So, and that's just a short list. There's a lot more, uh, but that's just the really typical behaviors you see from someone you might call a narcissist. So putting that aside, let's just say, how can I tell if someone's a narcissist? I think the better question to be asking is actually, how are these behaviors that I'm seeing in this person, whoever that is for you, um, how are they affecting me? You know, look, look at behaviors rather than uh someone being a narcissist maybe they are maybe they aren't but the truth is if you're if there are behaviors that they are having towards you in your relationship if there is a dynamic that is unhealthy and those behaviors fall within the realm of narcissism then you want to focus on how it's affecting you so there's something that's called narcissistic injury and i've been learning a lot about this in the past few months and years and it's something that I'm really starting to understand better is that there is a type of narcissism that can, you know, that can be described as narcissism, but isn't necessarily a pathology or a personality disorder in which a person that's experienced a lot of trauma and maybe have uh, CPTSD, you know, which is, which is a type of PTSD that is a little newer in the realm of psychology, but is chronic, which is ongoing, that comes from, you know, just a, a, a long amount of time in which um, trauma has been occurring over, over a long period of time. And so this is typically, you know, defined as something that comes from childhood trauma. And so there's something that can happen when a person has CPTSD in which if they, you know, haven't dealt with their trauma, there are behaviors that can exhibit as narcissistic and they can look very similar to that of a person that actually has a pathological personality disorder. Um, the difference being, which you know, you're not gonna know this if you're trying to determine this, the difference being that a, a pathological narcissist doesn't really change. Like they have a very fixed ego. You know, they have a, they're very fixed in their positions and um, a person that has uh, just narcissistic behaviors as a result of trauma, uh, they, they may not necessarily be so fixed. Like their ego is more malleable. They, they may have more of an ability to take responsibility for their actions. They might be able to be more apt to get help and to be able to, to heal what's going on with them, maybe to change, uh, to maybe be able to possibly be in a healthier dynamic with a person if they deal with their own issues. But typically with someone that has a narcissistic personality disorder, it's very uncommon that that person ever really changes. They may even look like they're trying to change, but ultimately that's not what they're committed to. And so the reason I'm saying this is because you know, if you think about it, does it really matter which one it is? Because if this behavior in this relationship is affecting you in a negative, toxic way, if you are 
if you're being codependent in this relationship with a person that has these behaviors, it's not important to determine exactly why they're having these behaviors because the steps that you want to take to protect yourself, to have boundaries, to start to turn within and heal are going to be the same. Now, what I'll say is that, you know, at some point, if you do these, these things to heal yourself, if you remove yourself from this toxic relationship, if you have boundaries, if you turn within, if you let that person go and you, you give back the responsibility for their, their healing and well-being to them, and they maybe aren't a narcissist, maybe they just had some behaviors, there's a way more of a chance that, you know, later on, you might be able to reconcile because that person might be able to actually show up in a healthy way. But you can't hold on to that. That's the thing. And that's why I kind of, I feel like it's important not to try and figure it out. Because I think that that's part of it is that we're kind of trying to control things. And we're trying to decide, is this person really a narcissist? Meaning like, I don't want to let go of them. You know, I don't want to make a mistake. And what if this can work out? And I get that. Um, but that's kind of the deal is that, you know what, you've got to surrender at some point, you've got to let go. And you have to know that by setting boundaries and by taking the steps to remove yourself from something unhealthy, when you do that for yourself, then you're a lot more likely to be able to have a healthy dynamic with perhaps this person or someone else in the future. But it's important to let go of the attachment to that person, no matter what it is that they're dealing with, whether it's personality disorder or just general trauma. You get what I'm saying? So kind of taking the focus off, you know, I know it's important to define narcissistic behaviors and traits because I, I talk about how important that is to be able to put a label on behaviors. Uh, but I'd like to really just be clear that focusing on trying to determine if people are a narcissist ultimately is going to get you stuck in like a mental loop. And it might even end up being a distraction for you um, when it's time for you to actually just start turning within and looking at your at yourself, at your inner child's unmet needs and looking at what you need to heal and resolve. At some point, you have to turn away from that quest and you have to go within. So I hope this has been helpful to you today. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and if you think you're getting benefit from it, I would love to see you subscribe and hit like buttons and stuff down there. Um, also, if you'd like to help support the work that goes into my channel, I have a Patreon uh, account that you can join and the link is also down in the info. So I will see you all next time. May you be at ease and no joy. Bye-bye.